Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to change a photograph of a person into the look of a comic book character. Now a couple of assumptions that I'm making right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. And second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, whenever I say hit the control key on your keyboard, that means hit the command key. And whenever I say hit the alt key, that means hit the option key. So with that out of the way, let's get started by opening up the photo that we want to turn into a comic book character. Now I'm using this photo here of a girl uh, in snow outfit. Uh, I have a link in the description below where you can download this particular photograph from the web for free, but feel free to use this with any photo that you have. It works with just about anyone. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to unlock this layer by clicking on the little lock icon on the layers palette and then we're going to right click on the layer and we're going to convert it to a smart object. Once we have done that, we are then going to uh, duplicate this layer by hitting control J on the keyboard to duplicate the layer and then at the top layer we're going to name it lines because it will be the lines and the bottom layer we are going to name comic effect because it will have the comic book effect applied to it. Then we will hide or turn off the uh, eye icon here for lines and then we are going to apply the following filter gallery effects to the comic effect layer on our layers palette. So make sure that you have comic effect layer uh, highlight and then we are going to go up here to filter and filter gallery. Now the first filter that we are looking for is going to be found under artistic. In fact, the first three filters that we're looking for are going to be in under artistic. Uh, but the first one that we're looking for is right here, poster edges. So we're going to click on poster edges. And what we're going to do over here in the options is we're going to change the edge thickness to two, the edge intensity will be one, and the posturization will be two. Okay, then we're going to hit OK to uh, accept that effect and then what we're going to do here next to filter gallery and this is why we wanted our layer to be a smart object is because now if we wanted to uh, change the effect a little bit you could just double click on the filter gallery name there and you can go back and change it which we don't want to do at this point but also what you can do is you can change the layer mode and the opacity of the actual filter so on the right hand side of the filter that is now underneath your smart filters, you can double click on that and it will bring up the blending options for filter gallery. Unfortunately, uh, filter gallery does not name each filter, so it's a little bit difficult if you put in a bunch of filters. You just have to keep in mind which one is which. For this one, it is the uh, filter for po poster edges, and what we're going to do, we're going to leave mode as normal and the opacity we're changed to 50%. Then we're going to hit OK and we are done with that filter, but we're going to add two more filters to this from the filter gallery. So go back up to filter, go to filter gallery, and the next one that we're going to do is we're going to use cutout. Now cutout is right up over here, so we're going to click on cutout, and then the uh, options that we're going to put into cutout is going to be number of levels will be at the max, which is 8, edge simplicity, will be at 4 and edge fidelity will be at 3 which is all the way to the right over here so 8, 4 and 3 we will then hit OK and then what we are going to do see what I mean here about filter gallery filter gallery it's hard to know but that's why we do them one at a time uh, so cutout is the topmost one right now so what we're going to do is double click on the right hand side sliders here to change cutout and we will leave it at normal, but we change its opacity to 75. Hit OK, and then we're going to add on one more filter gallery filter. So then we're going to go back to filter, filter gallery, and the next filter that we're going to do is right down here under artistic still, watercolor. And what we are going to do here on our options is the brush detail will be up at 12, right here. Shadow intensity will be at 0 and texture will be at 1. So 12, 0, and 1. You then hit OK and what we will do here, the topmost one is the 
uh, watercolor filter. We can turn it off and turn it back on. Uh, but what we're going to do is go to the options area right here, double click on that on the right hand side of the filter, and we're going to change its mode to screen, and we're going to change its opacity to only 65%. We then hit OK. We now have our three filter gallery filters there, but we're going to add one more filter to this layer. And we're going to do that by going up here to Filter, going down to Pixelate, and then to Color Halftone. This will give it kind of a, uh, a print. Uh, uh, what you see in comic books a lot is that old school halftone print. So what we're going to do is a max radius of 5. We're going to make channel 1 50. Channel 2 will be 50, channel 3 will be 100, and channel 4 will be 100. We're then going to hit OK, and that will give us this halftone effect, but it's very strong and not exactly what we're looking for. So once again, we're going to go to the right-hand side of that, and this one does say color uh, halftone, because uh, if it's not in filter gallery, it's considered its own filter, so it will name it so it's easier to find. And we will click over here on the options to the right, which will bring up our mode and opacity change. Uh, and what we are going to do is going to make the mode overlay, and the opacity is only going to be 15%, 1, 5. We then will go to OK, and as you can see, it gives it a very nice look on the face and on the arms. Uh, anything white doesn't really show, anything black doesn't really show this effect, but everything else does. Okay, now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to make it look a little bit more comic booky. So what we can do is uh, click on the little arrow next to Comic Effect to hide all of our filters because we don't need to see them individually anymore. Uh, and then what we're going to do with Comic Effect Highlight, we're going to go down to the bottom of our Layers palette. We're going to click on uh, the uh, uh, Layer Adjustment style, and we are going to bring up a Vibrance Layer Adjustment. And we're going to make the Vibrance all the way up to 100, and the Saturation is going to be 10. Okay, so now it is 110%. Uh, we can then hide that, and there we go. We now have a very more uh, comic book color scheme going on. It's much more vibrant, much more, uh, it's got a lot more pop to it. So then what we're going to do is we are going to make our uh, foreground and background black and white by hitting D on our keyboard to make them the default black and white. And then we are going to hit X on our keyboard to put the white as foreground and the black as background. And the reason that we're going to do that will be obvious very soon. We'll come right back to it when we get to that part. But it's very important that white is your foreground and black is your background. Then what we're going to do is we are going to make lines, the top layer, visible. Okay, so this is what we started with, and we already have a very comic booky look. However, it's missing lines. That's why we have this lines layer here. See, without this layer, which we will add on in a few moments, the lines on the outside uh, are kind of missing, and everything kind of fades into nothing. The eyes, the mouth, the teeth, it's just, it looks more like a painting than it does a comic book effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the lines layer visible, and then what we're going to do is apply some filter gallery effects to this layer. So we're going to go up here to Filter, Filter Gallery, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down here to Stylize. We're going to click on Glowing Edges, which is the only one under Stylize. And what we're going to do is we're going to play now with our, ed uh, our options here. Edge Width we're going to leave as 2. Edge Brightness is going to be 6. Now the smoothness is where you have to use your own eyes to figure out what you think will work. And after doing this a few times, you'll figure out which works best, whether it should be less, like this, to bring out more detail, uh, smoothness. The lower the smoothness number is, the more details will show up. So like a 2 or a 1 will bring out most details, whereas if you go very high, you'll lose a lot of details. So I happen to like a lot of detail in my comic book drawing, so I'm going to stay at around uh, 4 or 5. I think 4 is good. So for this image, I'm going to use 4. But feel free to play around with this and figure out what works best for your image. And remember, since this is a smart um, 
uh, smart filter under a uh, smart object, you can always come back and change this if you need to later on. So I'm going to stick with this, 264. We're going to hit OK, and we now have this very bad-looking black and white kind of effect. But that's not all that we're going to do. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add another uh, filter gallery filter. So we're going to go back to filter, filter gallery, and we're going to go to sketch, and we're going to go to torn edges. And this is why you wanted white as your foreground and black as your background. If you had them switch with black as your foreground and white as your background, then everything here that is white would be black, and everything that is black would be white. Okay, so you want it to be white as most of your background, and you want the black to be the lines. Okay, so that's what you need to, that's why we needed to make the black and white foreground and background colors switch to be white foreground and black background. So over here under torn edges options, what we're going to do is we're going to make a balance of eight, which will bring out more detail. Okay, the smoothness that we're going to use is going to be all the way up at the top here, which is 15. That gives you a lot of lines and it doesn't blur out or become thick and disgusting. Uh, and the contrast that we're going to use is 11. Contrast doesn't really affect this filter as much as uh, you would think until you get to the extreme. So if I go to the extreme right or the high numbers, it becomes just a, a mottled mess. And if we go all the way to the left, it becomes more of a gray mess. But if you stick towards the middle, say an 11 or a 12 or something, it doesn't really show up. It doesn't really affect the final image. So stick with 11 for, for your uh, contrast. So let's hit OK. And we now have the image here. Now what you have to do, of course, is go to your topmost filter gallery filter under your smart filters, under your smart object here. You got to double click on that and you want to, oh, I am wrong. You don't want to change any of that. What we do want to do is we want to hide our filters and we want to go to the lines here and we're going to change the layer mode to multiply. And we are going to change the opacity to whatever suits our eye. Now, you might like this effect. I think it's a little heavy handed. So I tend to use something around 25%, which gives you the lines that I was looking for around everything, as you can see here. But it doesn't distract too much from the actual comic bookiness of this uh, design. So what you have here is a, a comic book effect. Now, if you increase the opacity of the layer, it gets, uh, I think, way too much. If you lower it too much or turn it off, it, it's missing that bit of comic book effect. So I like to keep it at around 25%. To you, it may be different. Feel free to play with that as you will. Now, one thing that is missing here that we are going to add, and you'll probably need this with most of the images that you do this effect on, the eyes are missing visual interest. So the way that you give the eyes a little bit more interest is you add in some catch lights to them, or basically with a comic book, a white dot somewhere uh, in the iris area. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer here by clicking on new layer icon. We're going to double click here and we will name this as shine. Okay. And all you need to do is go to your brush tool. Make sure that on your brush tool, you pick a hard round brush and you want your foreground color to be white, which it's already should be. You want your mode to be normal. Opacity is 100%. Flow is 100%, and that's all that you need. Then you can zoom in if you want to, but you want to make your brush pretty small. So whatever the iris, which is the blackest part of the eye, whatever that is, uh, you want to make your brush slightly smaller than that. Okay, and don't put your dot right in the center of the eye. That just looks creepy. You want it to be slightly off from the, from the center of the eye and where the light seems to be coming from. And the light in this image seems to be coming in from the upper left-hand corner. You can see a little bit of light here on her eye and up here in her eye. So that's what we're going to use as our, uh, our focal point. So her blackness here, let me zoom in so that you can see what I'm talking about. Her, her black iris is right here. And it's also right here in the center of her eye. So we don't want to put our white dot right there. We want to move it right about there. And then we want to go here and do the same thing right about there. 
that gives you much more visual interest, especially when we zoom back out. You see that you've got this kind of catch light in her eye. Now, if you don't like where that is, and the reason that we made this a separate layer, is you can then go to your move tool. Whoops. You can then go to your move tool by going over here or hitting V on your keyboard, and then you can just click and drag or use your arrow keys to move the uh, to move them wherever you want them to be. So there, that's a little bit more in keeping with where I want it to be. And then when we zoom out, we now have a comic book effect done to a photo. This effect can be used on nearly any photo or uh, portrait that you have that you want to apply a uh, comic book effect to. In fact, what you're seeing now are some examples of other photos where I applied the exact same effect that we used in this tutorial without changing any of the parameters or options. Of course, since uh, these are smart objects with smart filters that we used in this tutorial, you can of course go back anytime and change any of the parameters or options to make the effect look the way you want it to look. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, I am Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.